Hi, I'm Tim Weaver. Welcome to GTA 5 O'Clock. This is our new weekly show where we'll be talking about GTA 5 every week on a Wednesday at 5pm. I'm here with Dan Dawkins. Hello, Dan. Hello there, Tim. Let me tell you a bit about Dan. He predicted everything you're seeing in GTA 5 a year ago, which is why he's here to show us his credentials. Dan, what are you going to tell us over the coming weeks? We're going to have analysis of all the trailers. We're going to look at uh, every screen. We're going to pour forensically through everything and using the same approaches that got us the correct predictions 18 months ago. Okay, cool. So here's the new trailer. Okay, here we are. Super exciting. It's trailer two of GTA 5. First thing to notice, the soundtrack. This is a song by Stevie Wonder called Skeletons. Now, in fact, when you look at the meaning of this song, it actually means like skeletons in your closet. It's a song about lies and deception, which came out in 1987. And in one version of the song, it was actually sound bites from uh, leading political figures or like army generals, including Colonel Oliver North, which was a quote which said, I am not ashamed of anything in my personal and professional conduct, which might have turned out to have been a mild <laughs> porky pie. Yeah. Um, so that was quite interesting. Um, also in the video for Stevie Wonder's uh, song, it featured a number of like uh, urban archetypes who had like secret skeleton lives. So uh, for example, they had like a perfect mother who was also a raging alcoholic. They had a business leader who was secretly a transvestite and a US boy next door who was a cocaine addict. Excellent. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing that the choice of song isn't insignificant. No. Bonus trivia point also appeared in Die Hard when Argyle's on the phone. That's weird because I actually thought I, I recognized it, but I didn't, I didn't know from where but it obviously is Die Hard and I've got my Nakatomi Plaza t-shirt on today oh well well done that's well great done. points so, yeah, for me so straight off so now we got, we've got this song confirmed we've obviously got the uh, Ogden's Nut Gone Flake song confirmed also from the early reports we've also got uh, the Golden Earring Radar Love mm. which is Top Gear's top rated driving track of all time so actually it's interesting that all the tracks released so far have got kind of a retro-ish vibe to them yeah I'm pretty sure there's going to be some contemporary stuff given the setting yeah one other thing I noticed on this first uh, first still, we've frozen it here. There's a couple of things actually. We've got Griffiths Observatory right up here on the hill. In the background, you see a bridge. Now, my research tells me that that's the Vincent Thomas Bridge, which connects to via Terminal Island to the port of LA, which I believe is where some of the missions take place. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think an interesting thread so far with all of the screens released is they all seem to interlink or hint at different parts of the missions that have been revealed in the Game Informer exclusive, mm. so again, I don't think there's much being released that that is by accident. No. Which is interesting to study. Okay, let's play it. Tennis, we've already seen tennis. Yeah, again, Rockstar have talked a lot about minigames. It's worth stopping there, where we just saw uh, one of the lead characters, Michael, who's a 40-something, mm. who's um, relocated after cutting a deal with the FIB which is the equivalent of the FBI. Um, now, he's living in a sort of semi-retirement witness relocation-style life with his wife, Amanda. Now, from the looks of things, and this is what Rockstar have said, they're not getting on very well. No. Uh, and she's basically out spending all his money. He's living this sort of disillusioned millionaire's life of a prisoner. And so I'm guessing this is pretty much the spark that's leading him to go out and pursue a secret life as a crim again now it also talks about his kids which we'll see more of in a minute but he's got his daughter who again he barely interacts with and in the game informer exclusive they talk about him going into a room to say hello to her he does she barely recognizes him and she's playing like a rhythm action game in the background um and yeah his son who we'll see more of later in the trailer who they also have a very interesting relationship it's also worth noting quickly, I noticed this, I don't know if it's a thing, uh, the wife, Amanda, is a lot like the wife of Larry David's agent in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, that might be a complete uh, you know, coincidence, but I thought that was quite amusing. I like the way also in this, you, you've probably noted already, that they've, they've made him slightly overweight and pudgy, like he's off his game a little bit. and Because uh, he's not like that, he's not taut and kind of ready for action, he's like enjoying the... the the, you know the high life I guess off the back of you know his past yeah he's not ripped and lean like we are in many ways no, um, exactly yeah. no but I, I think um, there's always a nice little touch yeah and I think what's also interesting is the, the older protagonist is reflective of an audience who've grown up with GTA games yeah that's interesting so yeah. There's, there's a lot of us who would have played GTA let's say 10 to 12 years ago would have been in our early 20s who now have got to their 30s and much like lead character Michael 
have uh, signed ourselves up to the FBI because we've seen too much. Yeah. Uh, and in other ways, uh, had kids and had yeah. to slow down. Yeah, yeah. So this is our fantasy and escape. Cool. Okay, we'll move on. So as we can see, he's living a pretty opulent life here, uh, enjoying the old gin and juice or a bit of a whiskey. I think this image is... is yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I think in one scene, you're getting essentially, I think, what the themes of um, yeah. GTA will be, because you've got the high rise and the low life all in one image. And I think that the collision between that and I guess the... This is the big theme of the age, I suppose, in this sort of uh, age of economic austerity. The winners uh, winning bigger, the losers uh, losing harder and in greater volumes. So you've got kind of like, you know, the well-to-dos or the people, the jobbing people driving through the middle, the people locked up in the skyscrapers. You know, and literally underneath the underpass, you've got kind of, you know, where we've seen in previous trailers, the guys gathering around just trying to find somewhere to sleep mm. and, you know, somewhere to hang out, really. Interesting, with they, there's a lot of trains in this trailer as well. There seems to be... A lot of action taken in and around trains. Do you, do you think that'll be a significant part of it, or? I don't know. I mean, a, a working like a tube or train system would be really interesting. I don't know if the train would. I mean, they did have one in GTA Three, didn't they? That you could, that you could ride on the top of and ride inside. But I, I mean, there was there's a thing later on in the trailer. We'll see where trains collide, and there's. You know, I don't know yeah. whether that means that there's going to be things in or around the trains or I think given the scale of the game this is like you know the biggest open world rock star I've ever produced and, and as anyone who's ever uh, gone across San Andreas on any form of transport or, or tried to ride across Red Dead will tell you mm. that's really vast mm. so I mean obviously the game the game in, for the first for a rock star you know GTA game it's all going to be open from the very start mm. but um, you may not have access to all the missions etc etc but um, you will you know you can use a chopper or a plane as we've seen but if you need to get about fast as well, surely a train would make an awful lot of sense. On the right-hand side here, we've also got storm drains, so uh, we may get a bit of Terminator 2 action at some point. With a robot sent back from the future? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting here to note, uh, Rockstar haven't really detailed how, but they are talking about um, revamping the entire combat system. Now obviously here it looks like we're seeing two kind of like street bum guys duking it out so I don't think these are the premium moves in the game no. but I do think it's indicative of the fact that we're going to see a lot bolder, a lot greater combat. Also worth noting is a brand we're all familiar with, Piss Fasser. Yeah, we've seen a few brands sort of you know, coming out of the woodwork now that we recognise from previous GTA games as well. Uh, Clucking Bell, I think, is in this trailer. Maybe we've seen At Up and Atom Burger and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, and we'll, we'll catch some more stuff later on. So here, yeah, we're getting a glimpse here of uh, the game's second big protagonist, and this is Trevor, uh, who is a well, essentially a nutcase, a complete psychopath, uh, and he's like an ex-war vet, and he's actually an expert pilot. Um, now, what's interesting is in a recent interview, um, Dan Hauser of Rockstar talked about the three characters and what it allows them to do. And given that the game essentially is concerned with like the pursuit of the almighty dollar, each character represents like a different aspect of what the search for money represents, which he broke down into greed, ambition, and insanity. Right. Now, I think I'm guessing yeah. Trevor comes in on the insanity side of things. Yep. And certainly from the first demo, from what we've seen, uh, the first time you glimpse Trevor, he's taking a giant dumpus on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's uh, he's probably uh, his place in Salton with the well, the game's equivalent of Salton Sea. And who we're seeing the flame worth pausing here. We're seeing that flame uh, kind of thing that 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 that, that uh, they talked about in the game Informed exclusive, which is like this: you can lay down a trail of petrol on it; it l it'll lead into the house. Oh, that's wherever, fascinating. And, you know, and so they talked about that in the game. Before. I don't know how bigger part that will play in the game but this is it in, in action here I would imagine I think something that is interesting to note is they've said uh, each of the characters side missions will be different according to their skills and like as you just touched on uh, Trevor being a, like a mild nutcase and probably being handy with like a, a petrol grenade and that type of thing I think Trevor's strand of side missions will represent kind of the GTA player who just bought the game not to get involved with the story but to go out and have a, a proper rampage mm. so I'm guessing his side missions will be that sort of secret guilty thrill side mission of yeah. going out and causing a massive rumpus funny as well this trailer uh, there's a few funny lines in it like the one he, where he's left all the bodies there 
Yeah, absolutely. It's, I think it's a real, almost like a, a weird buddy movie vibe to it. And um, if here we're getting our first glimpse of the third and well, final protagonist, as far as we know, which is Franklin, mm-hmm. who's a, an early 20s repo man for like a posh car company. Um, he represents kind of the aspiration scale of uh, the chase for the almighty dollar. Um, but he's linking up here with Michael and they, the three characters, their kind of unifying bond is these bank heists or bank jobs they perform mm. of which there's going to be six key heists in the game and they're all based on what was an excellent mission in GTA 4, four yep. Three Leaf Clover which is excellent and backslash rock solid uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and drive, drive drive people mad but um, I think yeah that's going to be really interesting to see how that develops so we're getting yeah a great look at the at the cars and the vehicles. I think here we're getting a glimpse of what you can only presume is Franklin's girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, and again, like a lot of the men in this, he seems to be having a fairly hard time. Yeah. Um, interesting point you raised, Tim. Yeah. About uh, the apartment and um, the the capacity to buy property. Yeah. From what I understand, Rockstar have said that you you can't buy property. No, I think they've they've sort of downplayed the whole that whole aspect of it. Although um, we've seen the apartment here, we know that you can dress the characters, don't we? So I don't know whether maybe your apartment you can stick up a few pictures and that sort of stuff. Whether you, I don't think there's going to be any too much property management mm. in there. But I imagine you'd be able to. I, this is you know an assumption given that you can dress your characters. I think you should be able to make aesthetic changes to the apartment. I would think. Yeah, I think that's a completely fair assumption. And what all Rockstar have said officially is that the economy system will be vibrant and fun. Mm. Now, I'm guessing that will be buying lots of gaudy tat, either for yourself yeah. or for your various property. Uh, you know, whether it extends to things like customising vehicles, we'll see. Mm. And talking of vehicles, here we go, you know, seeing a really intense high speed car chase. Uh, it's only worth noting here that obviously the game is really rich with brands. Uh, they can't use Apple, but there's a company called Fruit. Yeah. And their logo is a little bit rude. Um, so I think, yeah, that's going to be a theme of GTA V, obviously. Oh, and here we're getting a glimpse of um, Michael's model son, uh, James, uh, hanging off the back of a boat on the back of a speed chase and yes it looks fairly exciting <laughs> it looks like sort of something that would happen in lethal weapon yeah yeah it, it does look like that it's funny as well i mean that's what i mean earlier about, about it being funny you know the the transition between him being at the school and uh, the teacher saying oh your son's you know okay yeah, he's doing all right and then him like whoa off the back of this <laughs> you know the master of the uh, boat is it makes you know it's, it's it's clever editing but it's it's it looks like it gta 5 will have a good sense of humor yeah, I, I agree. I think it's always interesting. GTA always seems to think it's funnier than it actually is. Yeah. But despite that, because there's so much content, it is actually funny. Yeah, so yeah. it'd be a really good test to see if they've tightened this up and made it like a real good old fashioned hoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And here he is enjoying... Um, bouncing. Bouncing with his dad. Yeah. Uh, and there's Trevor stamping on the man's <laughs> brain, uh, which isn't quite so nice. Um, yeah, we, that's a heist... One yeah, the, you you mentioned it earlier. Six six main heists. Yeah, so six heists. Uh, that's something they're yet to reveal, um, like one in action. Mm. But I think that's obviously going to be a key mechanic of the game. You're obviously going to be like big set pieces. That's where speculation sort of expands about how the game plays, as in your ability to switch between characters in live flow. Mm. Where you know the idea is that during a or during the mission they showed to Game Informer it was possible to swap between one guy from a distance who was taking sniper shots, between the guy who was driving the escape car, between another guy who was involved in more close action combat. Mm. Now, you know, you could speculate further and given the grand claims they've made about multiplayer and about online and how revolutionary it's gonna be, whether certain aspects of the game will be playable in, in sort of simultaneous co-op, so you could play yeah, a co-op heist idea, with yeah. your friends. Mm. That's speculation, but if they've got grand plans, it would be that scale of thing you'd imagine. Do you think that? Do you think the missions leading up to the heist will be based um, around the heist? You know, like prepping for the heist. Do you think that's the way they'll go? Or I mean, I know it's you know maybe it's not out there in the public domain, but you know, having like these six tent pole kind of bank heists, I wonder if 
the whole you know the whole sort of direction of the game is 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 sort of facing that way and they all those missions before lead up to that heist you do the heist and then you move on to the next one and everything's like prep in some way i don't know i'm just i'm just thinking aloud here but. i think i think you'd want that and i, I think that would I, and again i know dan house has said he doesn't watch breaking bad but i think some of the great scenes in that are where like walt will tell jesse right i need you to go out and buy a 15 foot you know, bath yeah. that can't be melted with acid, and he yeah. goes, "Where, where am I going to find that?" Yeah. And I, I think, you know, that scale of building, 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 increasingly farcical, and resulting in, you know, a really big wow moment. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Dog. Yeah, dogs for the first time. Yeah. Um, what kind of dog was that, Tim? I think it was a Rottweiler, I believe. Um, but that plays into the. That's interesting because we saw a, a dog in the first trailer on the the beach. Mm. But also we know that there's going to be like Red Dead a, a col- you know ecology to the place. There's going to be animals and all that sort of stuff. So it makes sense that you'd be able to have a, a dog, I guess, within GTA 5's world. Where if you go up into the mountains, I think they've confirmed there's going to be coyotes right. and all sorts of other stuff. So I guess having a dog makes sense. Whether it should really be running down a highway while cars are blowing down there. At, that's three one, figures that's one wild dog <laughs> um, call the RSPA, R, RPSA whatever it's called in uh, uh, Rockstar Land yeah um, you know I, again are you going to be allowed to shoot dogs can they do that I don't know I, I, I really don't know um, the thing is the weird thing is in GTA you can be as violent as you want but I guarantee the moment you can shoot a dog people are going to be up in arms about it yeah we'll see I mean obviously Red Dead wasn't that kind to animals no. so whether that continues to the GTA universe we're, we're yet to see uh, there we're getting yeah a little glimpse of like again high style action this, this bit is, yeah pause it that's uh that's i mean let's talk about this a well i mean check it out someone's mid it reminds me a little bit of um the the otherwise rubbish 18 <laughs> 18 movie yeah where they um i think they drove a tank out the back of a plane i, I think i think that's what happened uh, but anyway you know we've seen this sort of thing in hollywood movies before but interesting i wonder whether I wonder what he's what he's skydiving into here. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's at this stage, I guess we just speculate. But it looks like he's out in the countryside here, and definitely not in the city. So I, th- I don't know. I mean, given how ridiculous this game has been so far, I can only presume it's a thimble full of half full of tap water. Yeah. <laughs> and he has to land neatly with his head. I mean, I don't know. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Which takes you amazing. back to San Andreas. It looks like he's got a real sense of fun about it. You know, again, you know, maybe GTA Four didn't didn't have that kind of sense of ridiculousness which which Vice City and San Andreas definitely did have and yeah. definitely and there was there was some really cool um sort of skydiving stuff in the, the Gay Tony episodes yes. from the DC yeah, so I think this is going to pick up from that anyone who's had memories of like driving a, a bike off the top of Mount Chiliad and then using your mm. sky you know to skydive down this looks like it's just taking it to another level uh dirt bikes interesting because as we said earlier um characters have unique missions now uh, Franklin being a really skilled driver and given that all the screens so far seem to feature him either driving a quad or a dirt bike Mm. it seems exceedingly likely that a lot of his missions will revolve around I guess essentially races and circuit based stuff in the countryside and I'm guessing in and around Mount Chiliad we were just joking in the office that I hope it doesn't involve him trying to uh, drive after a train like in uh, San Andreas, oh. the mission that almost killed me. Don't rule it out, folks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trains again, like we were talking about talking about just now. You know, that's why I wondered whether you know there may be a working train system that you can follow around in, in a more ambitious take on what happened in GTA Three. I don't know. I mean, certainly there's some there's some there's going to be a nasty clean up operation after this one. Yeah, and again, Trevor involved in a bit of a sticky wicket moment <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. And you see the guys hanging out. The banter's quite good. The dialogue's great. I mean, it's made me made me smile a couple of times. And you can see that you know uh, Michael's kind of uh, well, you know, and again, if if it wasn't already quite exciting, now we've got. And you know, I I do wonder, given that previous screens have shown a character who looks exactly like Michael, in you know, like a, a tuxedo, effectively, or a suit. Uh, somewhat incongruously piloting a fighter jet mm. I wonder if again this is a moment that follows that where he's taken out two police choppers you know who knows how crazy the heist missions get or yeah. quite the scale of what they're doing is but let's be honest this looks fairly exciting yeah interesting one here 
see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. I see. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah I so, like it. Uh, so yeah, good good way to end a explosive trailer. Your impressions of it, Dan? Uh, yeah, I guess kind of more JP than I expected and, and jokey. But when you when you sort of cut past the you know the zippy dialogue, you look at what the gameplay implications are. Yeah, really exciting. Like you know. And I was kind of liking it a lot, but up until the point where they jumped out of the back of the plane, and then he was parachuting, and I thought, yeah, this looks pretty hot. This looks good. Okay, so that was our analysis for the second GTA 5 trailer. Every Wednesday, we'll be back at 5 p.m. to talk about GTA 5. Dan will be chatting a bit more, but we will be back between now and next week with an even more detailed look at the trailer, where Dan will be breaking it down forensically and telling it like it is, won't you, Dan? I can I wait. <laughs>